I'm Professor Masood Sadiq. I'm Chief of Pediatric Cardiology at Children's Hospital and Punjab Institute of Cardiology in Lahore, Pakistan. Uh, my presentation was on uh, long-term outcome after device closure of ASD. Now, this is a very uh, controversial topic these days because uh, device closure of ASD, although has been done since uh, mid-1990s uh, at a uh, larger scale, there has been recent concerns over complications, particularly erosions uh, which occur at the roof of the atria close to aorta. Uh, my focus was to first look at the uh, surgical data, historical surgical data, looking at the AST closure, um, follow-up of over 25, 30 years. Um, uh, surgery started way back in 1960s, so we have 40, 50 years follow-up. Device closure only started in uh, mid-1990s, so the follow-up data is uh, for the last 10 to 15 years only. Uh, I also uh, presented data of my own center, which we have recently published in Cardiology in the Young. Uh, this is a large-scale data of 205 patients uh, who had device closure of ASD uh, over a period of 10 years, and the follow-up was also up to 120 months. In this particular data, we did not see any erosions. Uh, we did not see any episode of thromboembolism, and the residual risk was also fairly low, uh, close to 3%. We did see that the uh, arrhythmias which you see in these patients, particularly adults, tend to persist even after you have closed the AST. As regard long-term data of AST closure, other than erosions, the issues have been in terms of aortic regurgitation, which was highlighted way back a few years ago. Um, we did not, we see uh, that this has not been validated by subsequent studies and uh, all the data coming up in terms of long-term results have not shown any significant incidence of aortic regurgitation. When it comes to thromboembolism, the risk is higher immediately after uh, device closure and is more so with devices other than implants or septal occluder. Fortunately, the ASO, which is currently the uh, device which is being used for a closure of ASD worldwide and is also FDA approved, has the minimum risk of uh, thrombus formation. Um, I think the one key message in terms of device closure of ASD is that uh, although surgery is gold standard, uh, device closure has come up long way. Uh, we, are, we now know that the results are comparable to surgery, but the risks of complications still need to be evaluated in long term, particularly the risk of erosions, the risk of aortic regurgitation. And I think we have learned certain things over the years, um, and I would just highlight few, a couple of them over here. One of them is that you tend not to oversize these uh, uh, devices. It's important not to balloon size them, rather use a, a, a stop flow technique to assess the size of the ASD. And if you are an experienced operator, you can do it without balloon sizing. And secondly, you need to be careful uh, that the device should not be touching any surrounding structures, particularly the mitral valve, uh, or it should not be hugging the aorta in a, in a sort of very uh, bulky, awkward way, because then there will be a risk of, uh, possible risk of erosions as well as thrombus formation.